smile again? We've already started. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, we can't press stop now. We can be edited. No, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, uh, hi, everybody. So, we're gonna, what we thought we'd talk about today is just something we're currently practicing in yeah. our relationship right yeah. now because we're always growing, we're always evolving, we're always learning, we're always wanting to have the best relationship and connection we possibly can. And we know as two individuals on our own paths, like if we don't put effort into our relationship, it doesn't grow. It just kind of goes, Ooh. so we're committed to putting effort. So yeah, let's share about a pattern we're working on or some things we're practicing. Sure. So something that we, you know, Christine and I, we walk and talk a lot and I'll put my weight vest on anywhere from sort of 30 to 60 pounds. Christine has a little egg weights that they're, they're used to and boxing. this extra human weight. <laughs> and the human weight. And she takes that and we go on our walks and we talk. And we share about what's alive for us. Sometimes we do some very specific visualization practices. And it's not really goal setting. It's more just, it's just more creation, manifestation, yeah. right? Like really divine manifestation. But that's not what this video is about. But maybe we'll do one on that as well. But we walk and talk and we share. And the other day, Christine shared something with me. And I want to preface it, right? This is really important. When And tell me, tell me if this is accurate, please, from your perspective too, right? So... <clears throat> When Christine has something really important to share with me, firstly, she's really good. You're really good at picking. Most of the time. Yeah, mo not yeah, all. Not all the time, but most of the time, you're really good at um, the timing, like choosing Gotten the timing. way better at that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've learned how important for a man <laughs> timing is. <laughs> Particularly for me. Yes. Um, and so um, Christine knows that, and I know that, our walk and talks are, are about that. We just talk about everything. And so Christine said, I really want to share something with you um, that I've been working on with our coach. We have a, a relationship coach that we work on. And... And the beautiful thing is about that is we didn't engage our relationship coach because, well, something's wrong in our relationship or it needs fixing, but there's areas that we know could use some improvement and evolution and we're in a really connected, beautiful place, so why not deepen that? Yeah, right? I have a baby coming, so yeah. <laughs> get our shit together. <laughs> yeah, even, even at another level, right? And so we're walking, she says, I want to share something with you. And she said, something that I'm really practicing is speaking my truth more often. And I'm going to let you go into the details and history of that. Yeah. But um, be before you do, oh. um, very briefly, I'm going to share how... Say, speak your truth, and then you tell me to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't say be quiet. I just said, hold on a second. I, 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 <laughs> I know. I know. It's easy. <laughs> and then <clears throat> two things it does for me. One, um, oh, what I was going to say first before I tell you those two things is that when you do that, I usually, when you say, hey, can I speak to you about something that's really important to me, I... 99.9% of the time I'm yes. very very open you drop everything yeah. yeah absolutely because and it also diffuses me I, it autom it's like if this weird thing happens where I automatically don't feel I need to be protected I don't need I, I, I drop the, the, the threat the feeling of threat like she's mm -hmm. going to say something that I've done that is wrong and that I need to that I'm broken I need to fix something and it's another thing that I need to do like I get out of those stories because of the way she's approached me mm -hmm. and so I'll stop there and I'll pass that to you Yes. So, so making requests and really speaking my truth is something probably I've been working on, you know, a lot of my adult life because one of my coping strategies is just to, like I'm a peacemaker and I often don't like confrontation. So I would, and I don't do this so, so much anymore, but in the past I would just keep things inside while silently building resentment and distance. And often in relationships, not just romantic relationships, but friends, family, if something bothered me, I would just distance myself. I would just shut down. And I wasn't really creating boundaries. I was creating barriers. It's just, you know, just like, I don't want to deal with this, so peace out. So I'd just kind of pull away. And I noticed in the relationship with Steph, because sometimes he can be reactive, which is a trigger for me, I don't speak up about certain things. I'm like, it's okay. I can handle it. I can handle it. I can deal with it. I can deal with it. But there was something that was really bothering me that I was just like, I have to, I have to voice this to him. And so I've learned that by actually finding the courage within me and also knowing that he loves me and we're on the same team and not projecting or expecting him to react poorly. Because that was that's unfair of me to hold that on him. Because he doesn't, he, you, most of the time he really does hear me. But it also depends on when I do it. Like he said, timing is everything. So even though I had the kind of aha with my coach that I needed to have this conversation mm. with him, I probably waited five days so that I could get centered, so that I could bring it up at the right time, and so I could present it in a non-triggered way. Now, what would also happen with this pattern of mine is I'd hold, 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 repress, not say anything, build resentment, and then one day I'd just snap and be like, 
this is what needs to happen and this is what's bothering me and it would just like all come out. And of course he's gonna feel defensive and reactive because I'm just like, he, you know, he doesn't see it coming and I've just had all this stuff building up and I just kind of bleh it out. And so the internal battle within myself is, all right, well, do I hold it in or do I spit it out? And neither one of those things are great. So it's really finding that place of communicating authentically and with respect to him. And this is, this is another thing I had to get over because it works much better when I'm really in my feminine, I present things to Steph in a certain way. And there was a part of me, especially the strong, independent, like, I don't want to compromise the way I want to communicate and like appease the way he needs me to communicate. Part of me that's like, I should just be allowed to say what I want to say whenever I want to say it. And I should be allowed to be messy and be in my feminine and he should just have to deal with it. Because I felt like it was a compromise for me to really adapt to the way he would hear me. And what I realized is it's not a compromise at all. That's what you do in relationship when you love another person because I want to be heard. So me communicating in a way that he can hear me isn't me compromising my values or not speaking in a way that's authentic to me. It's speaking in a way where I get my needs met and I'm heard. And when that light bulb went off, it's like, oh, I'm really getting what I want when I communicate in a way that he can hear me because I want him to hear me. So I think a lot of us kind of hold our position of like, well, I'm not going to do that or I'm not going to communicate in that way or that person's so needy or whatever. And we're missing the point that if we actually do change our communication style a little bit, we're going to be heard better. And for me, <clears throat> it was a really deep learning and is a deep learning that if Christine's making a request of me, it's, it's okay to really listen and just hear that. And that <clears throat> her making a request is not her trying to take away my freedom or control me because that's been my experience in the past. Not even so much with previous relationships, although a little bit, but more with my childhood and my upbringing. Right. And so instead of me becoming reactive and defensive and posturing that, I choose to be curious and open as best as I can. And I, and I, and I pause and I slow my breath down and I think about the request and I feel the request in my body. I don't shut it down. And me, because that's what my dad did. My dad would just shut down ideas. My dad would shut down my mom. He, he wouldn't give her a voice. And I don't want to be that man. And there are many men that are listening to this that have had very similar experiences with their fathers and their family dynamics. And so for me, as a partner to this beautiful woman, I want to really be able to hear you. And I want to be able to hear my partner. And if I'm coming from a place of feeling threatened, and feeling like we're not on the same team and she's against me, then I'm never going to be able to really drop into that space of, can I hear fully and be open to everything that you're saying? I don't have to agree. I can even hold a difference of opinion and perspective, but how I present that really matters because Christine's just being vulnerable to me. And it works both ways, by the way. Like she's just being vulnerable to me has done something that's really scary for her which is speaking the truth. If I shut that down, or if I get into my own threatened state, then all I'm doing is di creating more distance between us. And she gets even more fearful and, and just proves to her that she cannot talk to me. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't want to be that person because whilst that may remind her of her father, that behavior also reminds me of my father. And I've chosen, I chose many years ago, to never be my father, but we often still play those roles when, <laughs> when we're in a wounded state or when we're not connected to the core of who we are. We're not feeling strong. Yeah, yeah. So we just wanted to share that with you today because I'm sure there's a pattern in your relationship that you're working with. And I think in, in when we get in these patterns in relationship, we, we kind of think just about ourselves and like what we want and what we don't want to lose and what we need to shift. And we often don't think about, hmm, how may, how may this pattern be impacting the other person? How can I communicate in a way that actually is going to be heard? And how can I be on the receptive energy in a way that that person actually feels heard? So just think about in, if, you, if you're in relationship, how you're communicating right now. And is there an againstness in any of your dynamics? Are you forgetting that you're on the same team? And how can you communicate in a way that gets you heard? It's not compromising your values. It's not being manipulative. It's actually being so honest and authentic in a way that really, really gets you heard. And when your partner comes to you and, and has a request, can you drop your defensiveness and really, really hear? Because you're on the same team. If you're in a relationship, you're not against each other. You can be against each other or for the relationship. And we suggest being for the relationship.
for the relationship is what we suggest. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Christine and I will uh, do our best. We'll endeavor to answer them either via a live or a video just like this. We look forward to your questions. Blessings.